Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the third edition of the Global Public Health Week, an initiative of the World Federation of Public Health Association. My name is Marta Lamazzi, and I'm the Executive Manager of the World Federation of Public Health Association. As part of this amazing week, we would like to give you an insight of the key webinars we ran last year. And especially, I would like today to introduce you to one key webinar about shaping the future of public health sustainable investments. During this webinar, we have one speech by Dr. Anuada Gupta, the uh, president of the Global Immunization at the Sabin Vaccine Institute. As you may know, the World Federation of Public Health Association is part of the HPV consortium that aim to eradicate cervical cancer through vaccination. And Dr. Gupta is leading this consortium. During this webinar, Dr. Gupta highlighted the importance of vaccinate for HPV, both girl and boys, and very importantly, she highlighted the huge return on investment of these strategies. So I invite you all to listen to this extract. And in case you are interested to listen to the whole webinar, getting also more insight about the case of Costa Rica and how Costa Rica built over decades sustainable health system, please click in the link in the comments and listen to this very insightful discussion. Thank you very much. Um, so glad to have this opportunity to address uh, uh, public health professionals. And uh, the subject that I'm going to speak about today is so close to my heart, which is really uh, the human papilloma virus, its devastating uh, effects, uh, particularly on women uh, who are uh, uh, dying of cervical cancer uh, uh, every day. In fact, uh, a woman's life is claimed by cervical cancer every 90 uh, seconds. Uh, we have uh, seen a very worrying increase in, in the number of uh, uh, new HPV infections, which have now risen to 600,000 uh, new cases every year, and with a very high fatality rate with 340,000 deaths uh, uh, due to cervical cancer. And what is extremely disturbing is the fact that uh, incidence of cervical cancer is rising, uh, is not going down. It is rising among young women of 15 to 49, years of age. Uh, as I said, you know, a couple of years ago, we used to say we lose a woman to cervical cancer every two minutes. Now, now cervical cancer is killing a woman every 90 seconds. And, and actually, if we don't take action today, then there will be a further 50% increase in the number of uh, uh, deaths caused by cervical cancer, which means a woman is at risk of dying every 60 seconds in the years to come. And each death is a tragedy that can be uh, averted. Um, when you look at the cervical cancer landscape, uh, you also see that the burden of this disease and the deaths are very unequal. And it is low-income countries and really poor families within low-income countries that, that suffer from a disproportionate burden of this disease. So here, this, uh, this graph will show you that low-income countries have a three times higher incidence of cervical cancer compared to high income uh, countries. But if you look at the death rates, the mortality rates, yeah, you, you see here that deaths in low income countries are eight times higher uh, compared to high income countries. So look at the, that, the, the high toll that cervical cancer is taking in low income countries you, where uh, fatality rates because of um, cervical cancer are exceptionally high and that just shows lack of access uh, to preventive tools including primary and secondary prevention. Women uh, uh, living with HIV are uh, at a particularly high risk of uh, HPV prevalence 
and also at six times higher risk of developing cervical cancer during their lifetime. So really important to understand that, that the risk of cervical cancer is not equally distributed uh, within populations. And there are um, certain groups that, that have a much, much higher risk of, of developing and then dying of cervical cancer. Next. Uh, we have, fortunately, an increasing set of tools uh, to prevent HPV cervical cancer, and we know that uh, um, cervical cancer can actually be eliminated if, if we gather our act, and, and this uh, set of tools includes vaccines, highly effective vaccines, uh, diagnostic tests, which are becoming much more advanced and simpler to use, and, and women can now do self-sampling and, and also a new treatment method methods that can treat precancerous lesions before they develop into uh, full-blown cervical cancer. Next. However, uh, the, the uptake of these preventative tools uh, unfortunately remains a very uh, lackluster and low. So HPV vaccine was introduced 14 years ago, but you can see here that uh, HPV vaccine uh, coverage rates remain very low globally, with only one in seven eligible girls having received HPV vaccination in 2022. And countries that, that account for nearly 60% of cervical cancer burden are yet to introduce uh, the HPV vaccine in their national immunization programs. Uh, if we uh, look at the screening data, we find a lot of gaps. So the data is uh, inadequate. It is also very patchy. But, but whatever we could glean shows that uh, uh, less than 50%, in fact, about 44% of women in low middle income countries have ever been screened for cervical cancer, uh, as opposed to a WHO recommendation that recommends at least twice uh, uh, screening at least twice uh, during during the life course of a woman. Next. It is also important to understand that uh, when a woman is diagnosed uh, with cervical cancer, it is very difficult um, for, for, for her to actually bear the expenses of treatment. First, a lot of LMICs do not have adequate uh, treatment facilities, but then the costs can be prohibitively high for, for families who can ill afford uh, that, that expensive treatment. Also treatment methods for cervical cancer have remained very archaic and primitive and extremely traumatic you know, for women who undergo this, this, this treatment. And, and therefore the emotional uh, cause uh, of, of the trauma that is caused to women themselves, but also to the families is, is really very high, is high, but very difficult to measure. Next. We do have data which suggests that if we don't um, act today, uh, the global economy stands to lose 28 a billion dollars uh, by 2030. So it's not just a moral imperative uh, and it's not just a women health issue to, to um, invest in HPV prevention and cervical cancer elimination, but there's also an economic argument for stepped up investments in, in uh, HPV prevention and cervical cancer elimination. Next, uh, there is a very, uh, there is a recent report that's just been released at Davos um, by the World Economic Forum, uh, which, which uh, uh, brings out how uh, one dollar, every one dollar invested in women's health actually delivers a return of three dollars uh, in, in economic uh, growth. So really a sensible uh, agenda to pursue. Next. Uh, actually, uh, 2020 was the first time uh, that the world united uh, to, to um, make a clarion call to eliminate 
uh, a cancer. So we know that uh, families are increasingly uh, facing the pressure of, of uh, different kinds of cancers. But here is a cancer, cervical cancer is the type of cancer that, as I said, uh, can not just be prevented, but it is uh, it can be eliminated. And therefore, it was very heartening to see WHO um, uh, taking leadership on bringing member states together to commit uh, to eliminating cervical cancer. Next. Uh, following this call, uh, uh, the Sabin um, uh, uh, Vaccine Institute actually took a lead to, to galvanize a very diverse set of partners uh, to, to launch uh, the Global HPV uh, Consortium on 5th of September to, uh, 2023. That means a, month, a few months ago in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia. And we were so happy to see the enormous response uh, to the launch uh, of, of, of the consortium where, where several countries uh, participated and expressed a desire uh, to, to, uh, to uh, collaborate uh, with, with uh, an initiative to eliminate cervical cancer, but also multilateral organizations coming together to, to commit uh, their support. Next. Uh, what um, uh, now the uh, Global HPV Consortium uh, has launched uh, its uh, strategy and action plan for the next uh, three years. Uh, and, and the key strategic priority areas really focus on global advocacy and thought uh, uh, partnership, uh, knowledge management uh, and exchange. Uh, so we know there are lots of evidence gaps, but also there is very useful, valuable evidence and knowledge being generated, uh, which, which, but it is important to disseminate that and share that uh, with, uh, with all the st stakeholders. The consortium is also committed to convening uh, key stakeholders uh, and, and also make sure that countries receive support uh, to develop and implement a comprehensive and holistic uh, cervical cancer elimination plans that bring together uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, second, uh, primary and secondary prevention together, which means all the three pillars uh, that are important to eliminate cervical cancer and include vaccination, uh, timely screening, uh, so that uh, cervical cancer can be detected early, but also treatment uh, for, for pre-cancer lesions. Uh, next. Uh, I'm very glad to share this slide uh, because um, uh, within uh, weeks and months of uh, the launch of the consortium, uh, we have seen the number of consortium partners growing. So the consortium now has 40 uh, uh, partners. And looking at this list, you can see how diverse they are. So we are truly a transdisciplinary alliance where diverse uh, uh, actors are bringing their own comparative advantage uh, to make sure that, that uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its uh, parts. And, and the consortium remains committed uh, to activating uh, community-based um, voices uh, and particularly uh, unleash the power of uh, the youth and, and uh, women groups. This is also the first uh, initiative of its kind that is looking holistically at, at primary and secondary prevention and bringing that uh, together. Uh, and we are so proud that World Federation of Public Health Associations is a part uh, of this, uh, this consortium. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Marta.